Hi everyone, welcome to the Stock Hacker Academy show. I'm Erwin and this is Joel. Hello, how are you? I'm excellent, how are you doing? This is great. And we're here talking today about Canadian dividends. Something that doesn't get enough attention. I don't know why. Yeah, it's not something you're necessarily taught uh, anywhere. That's true. So we're gonna teach it here today, sort of, <laughs> our way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The, the biggest thing about dividends is they're usually considered safe or dividend companies anyways, companies that pay dividends are considered safe. Um, so as we record this, yesterday the, the stock market pumped on the Fed uh, announcement for whatever reason and it, it's coming down pretty hard today. We're still seeing a, the stock market struggling to gain any kind of momentum. Mm -hmm. People are afraid of crashes. So what do you do? go to save companies. Save companies that return cash flow. Yeah. So just thinking any company that makes cash flow, any investment that returns cash flow would, would be considered a more safer investment. And that's what the market seems to be rewarding these days. And as a real estate investor myself and a business owner, you know, I earn dividends from my company and I only can earn dividends from my company because the business is doing well. Uh, less so for my real estate portfolio, just because it's our investment style. We keep we keep as much cash as possible in the portfolio for for rainy days because we had a rainy day. I have a, I have a nine thousand dollar roof that needs to be replaced, no. <laughs> and because we leverage our portfolio so often that uh, we we squeeze our our portfolio for cash flow. Hence, that's one of the reasons why I believe in being diversified. That's why I'm a stock hacker. That's why I'm a dividend investor as well. Yeah, and. When you have dividends or cash flow, as any real estate investor knows, when you have cash flow, it just gives you a buffer. It gives you safety. Yeah. And then no different when you're uh, value investing in stocks. If you buy a company that has a track history of paying a dividend, then that's a good sign that's a good company. You know, there's many things that people can fake, like social media. <laughs> you, can, you can say, I'm the best investor in the world on social media. But if, you're, uh, if you have a track record of paying out your investors a percentage, every quarter for the last 25 years and at an increasing rate, then yes, you are a very, very, very good investor. <laughs> <laughs> but there's different, very different levels of truth. There's what, there's what people can fake, including financial reporting. People can fake those. We've, uh, we're all familiar with like Enron mm -hmm. or, or BreX, uh, but it's really hard to fake uh, cash payments to people, right? So that's why it's a, it's a great indication that the, that the business is strong at what it does, especially when it's increasing dividends through time. So actually that's a good point then, like what exactly is a dividend, let's define it. It's extra money. Uh, so for again, if a company thinks that their, their money, they've invested enough in their own business, that the money be, be better spent by paying out to their investors, that's what the dividends are essentially. So it's a cash payment in your account every month? Well, every quarter or whenever they decide. Every, typically every quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it's it's, the business is so successful, it's making too much money. Right? And all you have to do is own the stock. Yes, all you have to do is own the stock and then you start getting pay cash payments. And again, like, can you think of a more, of more defensive strategy than a company that pays out dividends? Mm -hmm. Especially companies that continue to increase what that dividend payout is each year. So we're gonna focus on a little bit. We'll, we'll de define another top, uh, to hmm. We'll define another term here in a moment, but the what we'll focus on is are a couple dividend aristocrats. That just means they've consistently paid, in the US it means they've consistently increased their dividend payout for 25 years. In Canada it means something a little bit different, but we'll cover that in a second. I think an important thing to also talk about is dividend yield. Mm -hmm. There is caution about chasing dividend yield, but what is the dividend yield calculation? Right, right. Actually, this is a good point about chasing dividend yield. Mm. Uh, you know, early 2000s, we, we still used to have uh, businesses that were investment, in, income trusts, in, income trusts. So they paid out like eight, nine, 10, 12 percent dividend yields. Mm -hmm. And then and then the, the tax laws changed in 2006. And then those stocks crashed 12 <laughs> yeah. percent. So you were getting great dividend yield, yeah. but then your stock crashed. So uh, pursuing high, pursuing overly high dividend yield can be a, a bit of a can be a bit it's too good to be true, yeah. <laughs> right? And it, won't, it may not last. I think that's like, it's just a general, good general rule when handling money. Like if you are getting high reward, there's usually higher risk involved too. So just understanding that. Mm -hmm. And these weren't necessarily bad companies. These mm -hmm. were just, this was just a, a change in the taxation rules by our uh, federal government. Yeah. 
right? And actually, one of the companies we're going to talk about, like Enbridge, used to have an income trust. Enbridge since bought it. They bought back their own trust company, mm -hmm. and now you can, you can just get dividends owning Enbridge as an example. So dividend yield is the comparison between the price of a stock versus what the actual dividend payout is. And usually when you see the dividend payout amount, it's always per share and it's always annual. Annualized. Annualized. Yeah. So the they're comparing that to, so you're looking at an annual yield. So if the stock price is, uh, <laughs> I totally forgot the example. Let's use Enbridge for example. Yeah. Say Enbridge is $50, mm -hmm. their dividend yield is just under 6%. This is 60% to make it easy. Then they're basically paying, uh, for the full year, they'd pay out uh, $3, right? $3 on a $50 stock would be 6%, and, and, and Enbridge pays out quarterly. So higher dividend yield can be nice. It means your money's working well for you. And finding that balance between consistency and good yield, that's kind of where, what we look for. Mm -hmm. And quality company and, you know, and then of course we look at uh, what the economic picture is for the company, mm -hmm. what kind of future they have, uh, for example, when we're talking about Canada, we're, we're ten, when we talk about dividend, dividend uh, successful dividend companies, it's typically banks, resource, and oil companies. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the extent of our Canadian economy. That, that's <laughs> largely, you look at, at the TSX and the majority of the listings are some kind of energy company or some kind of financial company. Yeah, yeah. Majorly. Uh, okay, so yeah, let's talk about Enbridge, um, this gas pipeline company been around forever it probably heats your home um i pay many enbridge bills <laughs> <laughs> if you're a real estate investor you're very familiar with them I, I, I some for some of them my tenants pay me back for them it's just the bills are our, our name but yes I, we have multiple enbridge uh enbridge bills for to heat our homes for natural gas uh and then can we go in the macro bit more the macro picture on yeah. enbridge so uh oh you're gonna bring that up mm -hmm. So, like we like you mentioned earlier, we look at what's also uh, what also is going on in the market outside the company. For example, for those who followed the story of Canada uh, investing in trans the Trans Mountain Pipeline, which they bought off a private company, well, the cost has exploded. Uh, <laughs> the 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 cost to build the pipeline has increased seventy percent, and that will be paid for. Not by a private company, but by us, the taxpayer, which was a decision made by the federal government. I don't know how this one didn't come up in the election, but it didn't. <laughs> Point is that a competing company that also is building a pipeline, the, again, the cost to build it's gone up 70%. So therefore, uh, one, that would imply Enbridge's pipelines have gone up in value as well because the cost to, to cost to replace them, the cost if you were to build a new pipeline would be uh, probably roughly around 70% higher as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's likely that Enbridge's value will at least stay, mm -hmm. possibly go up. So knowing that, knowing that, first of all, Enbridge isn't going anywhere. Second of all, uh, their costs are, or what they're being paid is going up, uh, that industry is in general. Is Enbridge a good stock to invest in? So what we're looking at is a financial overview of Enbridge's stock performance, particularly, and some of their income statements, performance as a company. But uh, draw your attention to uh, around the top of the screen, you see market capitalization, and next to that, you see the dividend yield. So first of all, actually, the market capitalization, so that's how much this company is worth when all of its shares are are totaled up. All the outstanding shares times its stock price. Right now it's sitting at $116 billion. Its dividend is, uh, it's, its price, so the price of, of Enbridge right now, which will be different obviously when this video publishes, but it's $56.85. And they are paying right now 5.98, so 6% uh, annually. Per but, share. And that's among the highest. If yeah, not the definitely. Highest. I think it's the, so we have a list uh, and there's also, what we have a blog post all about this as well. There's a, a long list of dividend, Canadian dividend aristocrats, longest, the companies who have increased their dividend uh, the most years in a row. Enbridge is sitting, um, they've increased their dividend for 26 years in a row. So it's pretty good. 
Mm. Yeah, I, I just wish I used to own it in the 40s. I, I, st- I wish I still did. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, $16 more. Yeah, but it's about, yeah, it's about $16 more. I wish I still owned it mm-hmm. because my dividend yield would be my cost base would have been lower, therefore, my income yield would be a lot higher. <laughs> a lot higher, yeah. uh, you know, especially so if you that's the beauty of dividend investing, you get in at a at, you know, whatever the price is today. 5, 10, 20 years from now, probably will be higher. There's no guarantee. But, the di- and if they keep this track record of increasing dividend, their dividend payout, well, your yield only goes up as long as, you know, trends persist. I shouldn't say right. only, but. Right. Especially if you're older and you're on mm-hmm. a fixed income, mm-hmm. it, it's, you know, it'd be wise to, in, to hedge against like your heating bill going up. Or your the price of the pump going up yeah. by having some uh, investments that are tied to oil and gas industry. This is like a direct, you can make a direct calculation. So you mentioned hedging against your your gas bill going up. You could actually make a direct calculation. How many shares do you need to buy in order to cash flow to get, to get enough dividends to pay for your Gas bill. Yeah, start with the heating bill. Yeah, <laughs> like, and that's the beauty of stocks. So you can do that. You know, we talk in, in real estate. If you're a real estate investor, you're very familiar with the talk of using cash flow to replace to, to pay your bills, buying properties to pay bills. Well, you can do the same thing with dividend paying comp, uh, stocks. The calculation is way easier, and the decision making process probably is a little bit similar. You know what your ratios are and your criteria are for finding cash flowing properties. Obviously, the terminology and ratios are different, but the mentality in the process is very much the same. So, for instance, um, what we're looking at here with Enbridge, they have a basic EPS. That means basic uh, earnings per share. So, how much are they earning f- divided by divided by the number of shares uh, outstanding? Well, two dollars and eighty-seven cents earnings per share. It's a good positive. So the higher that is, the more they can afford to pay out a dividend. So, and the more dividend the company pays out, the, the price tends to go up as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, did we want to look at uh, another stock? Or? Oh, let's talk about the Canadian National Railway, for yeah, example. Absolutely. So another another dividend payer doesn't pay as much dividend, uh, but again, we're that's okay. We don't necessarily have to chase dividends. Uh, we're looking for. When we're trying to be defensive in investing, so Canadian National Railway has gone on quite a run lately. So, you know, for me, I'm not buying it at this price. Ideally, I would have bought it closer to the to the when it, at the crash price around in the low hundreds. Uh, anyways, if you look at what Canada is, it's a humongous landmass. We mm-hmm. are the second largest country in terms of landmass in the world, after uh, after Russia, Russia, but ahead of China. Uh, again, we talked about what our economy is largely about. It's about we, we mine a lot in, in Canada, and then we need to transport it to wherever it needs to go, a refinery to uh, to a body of water for shipping purposes. And so how do you move product across Canada mm-hmm. and train until Elon Musk is able to <laughs> convert our trucks into self-driving? Yeah. We're going to be <laughs> the cheapest way to move uh, cargo uh, heavy, bulky cargo is by rail. So, and, and then if you think about the business, if you think about where you drive over railway tracks, they often go through very, very expensive real estate. Yeah. You know, uh, let's take uh, Union Station in Toronto. If you were to try to build a competing track <laughs> <laughs> to go through Toronto, how much would it cost you to do so? It ain't happening. But it, it's, it's not likely happening. It's, it would not be economically feasible. So you could argue that CNR, CNR has a very, very expensive real estate uh, where their tracks are. To, to reproduce their track lines would be uh, not easy to do, likely economically not feasible. Uh, it's, it's a great company in that it's uh, well positioned to well live beyond all of us. Mm, absolutely. I mean, it outlived our grandparents um, and maybe even our great grandparents. So it's been around for a while. It's probably going to stick around and, and evolve if it needs to. But yeah, and the business case exists for where it needs to keep going. Mm-hmm. The interesting point here. So it has a this is where chasing dividend yields. You can kind of see where you can get tripped up with that because this looks 
not awesome compared to what Enbridge was. 1.88%, so we'll say 2%. 2% dividend yield on $152 stock. Well, it's $152. Mm-hmm. Enbridge was 56. So if this, you know, if this were if this were less, you know, closer to Enbridge's price, maybe they'd have a similar um, a similar dividend yield. But look at the EPS on this. So in that same row, it's nearly triple what Enbridge's. Um, in fact, now I'm doing the math. Yeah, it's just over double. The so the. Uh, just over double, that's right. It was almost three. Um, Enbridge's basic EPS was almost three. Um, their dividend yield was six. CNR is two. Um, so is there room for their dividend to grow? Looks like it. This, isn't, this is without diving into their financials more. Uh, there is a strategy out there, dividend growth strategy, so finding the companies that are poised to grow their dividend. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, that's a whole other topic. Yeah, and, and, C- and then CN's probably something you want to put on your watch list. Yeah. Know, f- and like my mentor said, pray for stock crashes and market crashes, and CNR might be one that you want to pick up mm-hmm. during one of those crashes. So the point is, finding those companies that have persistently, consistently, increased, not just paid, but also increased what they pay out each year for a dividend payment, and comparing those and saying, okay, who do I feel comfortable investing in? Who do I feel comfortable buying? And it's just a place to start. It's somewhere where you can say, I have, if, you, if you're just getting into stocks and researching the stock market, and especially if you're a real estate investor, I think dividends will be attractive to you because it's cash flow. But we, it's a language that we all know. Yeah, We all want cash flowing real estate. Why wouldn't you want a cash flowing stock? Exactly. And then, we have, and then here at Stock Hacker Academy, we have other, we have other ways to make uh, cash flow out of stocks. And actually, I'm actually probably going to have a look at Enbridge once we're done this recording. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good point. Um, the stock hacking is something that um, kind of led us into this whole stock market conversation. If you're interested in just the stocks in general, especially if you're a real estate investor, we have a report right now, completely free, the link will be in the description below, how real estate investors find cash flow in the stock market. And it's, it's Cherry's story, uh, Irwin's wife, how she started, failed a couple times, years later tried again and found success in the stock market. And then there are four other stories from real estate investors and entre- entrepreneurs who uh, made a, a slight pivot from real estate to use the stock market to augment their cash flow. They still have real estate, but they're using both now. So if you want that report, real life stories, links in the description below. That's all for me. Yeah, please like and subscribe if you wanna hang out and see what we got coming up. And we're always here to be sharing our journey and what we're learning that's the best out there. Thanks everyone.